Hi there, welcome to a year one microeconomics revision video, looking in particular at the, the link between price elasticity of demand and the impact of an indirect tax. When a question says analyze the impact of a tax, there's lots of things you could focus on. Obviously, you're going to be using a, a core diagram to help you. If we think, for example, of the sugar tax that's going to be introduced in the UK and has been introduced in, in some other countries, including Mexico, the impact of a tax could focus on uh, the extent to which there is a change in the equilibrium quantity bought and sold. We'd certainly want to make a comment about the total tax revenue that flows to the government and also the change in the price in equilibrium relative to the size of the tax. That will also inform us a little bit about who pays the burden of the tax. Is it the consumer or is it the supplier or is it a bit of both? We'll have a look at that in a second. If you want to extend the analysis, think about the impact on other products. So, for example, the cross price effect. If you tax one product, what happens to demand for uh, substitute products that have not necessarily been imposed a, a tax? OK, time to go through the key analysis bits. So we're going to take an example of two types of indirect tax, one where demand is relatively elastic, price sensitive, and the other where demand is relatively inelastic. Here's our initial equilibrium between supply and demand. We're going to introduce a tax on producers. The supply curve shifts upwards. The amount of the tax is shown by the vertical distance between the supply curves. As a result, the equilibrium price rises from P1 to P2 and the quantity falls from Q1 to Q2. So when demand is relatively elastic, we get a sizable quantity reduction and a fairly modest price reduction. But keep in mind that the tax itself is the vertical distance P2, P3. Now the consumer always pays the increase in price bit. So the green shaded area here shows how much of the burden is paid by the consumer. In other words, the producer has been able to pass on some of the tax, but not actually all of it. In fact, less than half. The supplier therefore has to absorb the rest of the tax. The government will get the tax revenue, P2, P3, times by Q2, of which about two thirds in our example is paid by the producer. About one third is paid by the consumer. So when the elasticity demand is more than one, if the coefficient is greater than one, most of a tax will be paid for by the supplier. Contrast with this situation, a more inelastic demand, relatively inelastic demand, we put a tax on the product. Again, the tax causes the supply curve to shift up as before. Now the price rises from P1 to P2. The vertical distance of the tax is P2, P3 as always. And that little grey bit at the bottom is, is going to be absorbed by the producer. They, they, they've managed to raise the price from P1 to P2, but they haven't managed to raise it by the full amount of the tax. So therefore they have to absorb that bit. That's going to be paid by the supplier. The consumer will pay the increase in price. And of course the total tax revenue is shown by the two shaded areas together. When demand's inelastic, the government tends to get more tax revenue but it takes a big price rise to have a fairly modest effect on quantity. Key point in the second diagram here is that if the coefficient of elasticity is less than one, most of an indirect tax is paid for by the consumer. There we go, some thoughts and some analysis about price elasticity of demand and the impact of an indirect tax.